Are we ready to go ahead with the e-registration? Everybody's concentrating. So the first thing you would do is access a publicly public website and the user would obviously have to create uh, an account. And Brandon is going to do that. Typical, you put your name, you put your email address, you put a password. And then we move on to the next screen is where you put your personal details. Obviously, your name, second name. I think the key point here is that we are putting the mobile phone number. And we're going to send an SMS to his mobile phone and he'll enter the code he's received. Um, he's now entering his um, address, um, so kind of classic. The next one is interesting is where we want to make sure that Brandon is Brandon. So he's going to have to give us some identification. And this is done by presenting an ID or a passport. The next step is you can imagine to operate certain kinds of drones in certain kinds of airspace, you need a license, drone license. So you could check, is Brandon allowed to fly this kind of drone in this airspace by checking his identity, the drone identity, but also his credentials as a pilot. Um, so he's done that. Next thing is, we talked about the business case. Now clearly, who's going to pay for this? Uh, or you can have a model where some services are free and you want people to use them because you want to make it safer. And other services, people are quite happy to pay a premium for because they want to get access to specific airspace and they understand that they need to pay for the services which makes that possible. So here credit card details would be entered. Now, this is the magic. This is, once he's gone through that process, he will get an identification number. This number is issued by the authority, which is competent to give Brandon his unique identification. And this is, in this case, would be the Swiss Federal uh, Office of Civil Aviation. And this is the number which would be recognized, and any authority could contact the Swiss authority saying, do you know who is the owner, who is the pilot behind this number? And the same thing uh, would happen when he wants to register a drone. And to be able to find out uh, what Brand is doing, we need to know which drones he is operating. So he's now going to add drones. All this information would be provided by the manufacturers. And so this information generates this unique code for that drone. And these are the two bits of information he's going to have to submit for the e-registration, is the identification as a pilot and the identification for the drone he's going to be using. Um, and these have to be unique and they have to be provided by an authority. They can't be provided by CETA on air because this is the responsibility of the authority in this case. It's really important. So same way airspace, so AirMap is providing technology for the use space services to SkyGuard. In this example, here CETA is providing the service of the registry for the Civil Aviation Authority. Now here we can see the list of drones that Brandon has. And so now we're going to move to the, we need people can access this registry. And you could have different authorities wanting to access this registry. For example, here we're showing SkyGuide. And here SkyGuide can see the list of all the pilots which have registered. And if we choose Sebastian, which is going to be our first drone pilot here, um, we can see the details for Sebastian. We have his pilot's identification. We have all these details, but also we have here that he actually is operating a drone. If we click, which has a unique uh, identification, and SUI obviously is for Switzerland, and the next code. This is live, this is online, and now we're going to see how this e-registration fits into the next stages where we want to actually go flying. All right? This is the big picture. And the reason, one of the reasons we're in Geneva, as I said before, because we're going to sh demonstrate urban use space services. And what I want to highlight here is in the center here, we have the uh, runway of Geneva Airport, which is 3.9 kilometers, I've been told. And current regulation says you can't fly within five kilometers of the runway without an approval. And any aircraft wants to fly in this area needs to have the approval from um, the tower. And, but drones are tolerated up to 150 meters, 500 feet. So within the CTR, a drone can fly, but it must not exceed 150 meters. So that's a big picture. And this is on, but also very important. This screen is what Brandon sees. Brandon is our Sky Guy operator. Because it's going to get a little bit confusing. Right screen is going to be what the drone pilot does and sees. Right? And I think we're ready to go. What we're going to do now is introduce all of the pilots. So Sebastian is actually not actually, he's in the Parc Lagrange, 
which is about a kilometer from here, but that's going to be the first flight. I want to quickly show the other two pilots. So the next one is going to be Benjamin, who's flying the Albris. Here's Benjamin. Say hi. You can hear me. And the third pilot is Beat, and Beat is flying Intel Aero, and he's waving to us in the back. And on the right screen now, we're going to see the ground control station for Sebastian. And the information that he needs to cr uh, create and share with Brandon from uh, Skyguide is obviously, it's kind of three bits of information. Where he wants to fly, uh, how high he wants to fly, and when he wants to fly. And he's now going to create a flight plan. And the part of U-Space Services is creating that flight plan and then sending that flight plan to Skyguide to get approval. Um, Sebastian is using the standard SenseFly ground control station. He is not having to run another software to do use space services. It's fully integrated into his dashboard. So he's, you can see the flight plan is being prepared. He's therefore connected to uh, Skyguide. Brandon can now see the area in which Sebastian wants to fly. Little icon here is showing Sebastian's takeoff position. It's in yellow because he hasn't yet approved it. And we now can move to the um, flight plan screen. And we can see Sebastian's flight plan being submitted. It's pending. Um, Brandon, so the sky guide operator, can check that everything is OK. He can see the area, the altitude. Um, and he can then decide to approve this flight plan. This information is then sent back to Sebastian. And Sebastian needs three greens, I like to say, before he can take off. The first one is he needs to submit his identification, the pilot's identification and the drone identification. So that was submitted to the Skyguide platform, which checked it with the registry, make sure they were valid IDs. He got the approval for that. He's got the approval for the flight plan. And the third approval, or checkbox if you want, is that the telemetry, the information of Sebastian's drone, is being sent to the U-Space dashboard of Skyguide. And Brandon can share information he has back to Sebastian. We'll see that later on. So that kind of third little tick says that there is communication between the U-Space services and the drone pilot's uh, ground control station. So he's now clear to take off. So we have A, the icon, which shows the current position. So it's live tracking. The area in which he's going to fly has gone green. So that means this is approved. So Brandon can immediately see that this drone is authorized to fly in this area. And anybody else who can access the screen would know this is not a rogue drone. This is a fully authorized or approved sorry, um, mission. And you have full accountability of what he's doing, what altitude he's going to be flying. The, all the telemetry is available. Same thing. This is what the drone pilot is seeing. This is what Brandon from Skyguide is seeing. And live tracking, you can see exactly what kind of drone is, fixed wing, position, and he can sort of monitor that activity. Now, we're going to make it a little bit more complicated now. We're going to add a second drone to our live demonstration. Also, oh, here we have an aerial shot, I think you saw that, of the EB flying. The second uh, mission we imagine is this is Albris from um, Sensefly, and we have um, Benjamin as a pilot. He is going to prepare a flight plan where he will go and inspect the historical flagpole, which is behind us. So back to he's prepared his flight plan. We can see it here. So we're going to inspect this flagpole. Same thing as before. But on purpose, uh, he's not allowed to fly more than 500 feet because we are on the CTR of Geneva Airport. On purpose, he's entered um, a ceiling of 800 feet. And that flight is going to be sent to Brandon. And we can see it here, it's in yellow, so it's still pending. And this is to demonstrate the geofencing. So the idea is, um, this is triggering the fact that this flight plan is trying to access airspace, which is not uh, available. This flight plan will be rejected by Brandon or the system. And Benjamin will see that on his screen. And um, the approval has been rejected because of the altitude. He now is going to change altitude, resubmit the flight plan. See, it's in red here. So clearly, um, Brandon has full visibility. It's disappeared because it's been cancelled. It can be resubmitted. 
Same thing here, this is going ahead as planned. Back into yellow, this time Brandon can approve it. So Benjamin pending, we can see that he's corrected the altitude. So he's going to approve this flight plan. It's okay, same thing. And now we have the three greens, so we have the fact that the drone, the pilot is identified. The flight plan is going to be approved. This is all live, huh? This is not a CAN demo. And the telemetry information is being transmitted between both Brandon and Benjamin, and he's cleared to take off. And we should actually see him take off because he's right outside. Key point here is Brandon has full situational awareness. You can see the Ibri from Sebastian, the Albris from Benjamin. He knows which areas they're flying in. He knows their current position. He's got all the telemetry information. And this is, now we're gonna add one level of complexity. We're gonna put a third drone into this airspace. So different drone, but maybe more importantly, a different ground control station software. And this is going to be BEAT. Um, BEAT is flying the Intel Aero drone, which is using the PX4 autopilot and ground control station. What we want to show here is a different kind of interface. So he's sent, he submitted his flight plan. He's requested the approval. We can now see that appear on the screen uh, yellow. So it hasn't been yet approved by Brandon. Brandon will now show that the flight plan appears on his list. We have BEAT here, pending. He can check what BEAT wants to do. Is the altitude okay? Fine. Area wants to fly is okay. So Brandon can approve that flight. So as you see, different user interface, different solution, but it's all working, interoperable. So he's now going to, he's got his flight approved. He can now start the mission and he will take off and again count how many boats are in the harbor. Now, what is interesting to note is that there's no conflict in this traffic. You know, the traffic which wants to land Geneva Airport is not interested in flying around the flagpole of the um, clubhouse or counting boats or flying over the future construction site. So, you know, one could say that um, everybody is using a different part of the airspace and there's no reason to worry about it. But uh, as always, there's an exception. And um, for example, the exception could be a search and rescue mission where somebody's fallen off a boat, you want to send a helicopter to and locate that person and recover that person. And that could very well happen in this area and that helicopter would be flying within the same airspace as the drones. And the f what we want to demonstrate now is what is called dynamic geofencing. So Brandon from Skyguide has got the request from the search and rescue mission to close a specific part of the airspace. And he's going to draw this on his dashboard. Pretty straightforward. Obviously on purpose he's going to do it where we've got our three drones flying right now. He's going to give the reason the airspace is going to be closed. And um, this information will be published and pushed out to all the drone pilots concerned. Right, And this is happening live and it should be Appearing. Okay, this is the area which has been published, and the same area is appearing on Beat's dashboard. So Beat has the information that this airspace is closed for drone activities. He needs to terminate the flight, and all pilots have got the information that need to board their flights and return back to base. And as they come back, Brandon will have will be fully aware that the missions have been terminated. He can see the drones coming back. He can see the area being released by that drone operator. Just summarize what we've seen. So we've seen the e-registration and the e-identification. That's kind of key. Uh, without that information, there's no way you can do these other services. Because you, you know, if you can't identify somebody, you can't track him and you can't do something about it. Um, the other thing we saw is the geofencing. When somebody was trying to submit a flight plan and wanted to access an air which is not uh, accessible, he got the information that that could not be done. Uh, the other thing we saw is obviously the live tracking. We also saw the data exchange between both pilots, drone pilots, and also Skyguide operator. We also saw the integration of the use space services into the drone operator's 
um, ground control station. So that's something that's really key. It's not the question we're adding a layer of complexity. We're actually making it simpler for the drone operator. Uh, we believe that's going to mean that more people will be operating drones because A, it's easier, it's legal, and it's making the drone pilots more responsible and more accountable. Now we can see that all the flights are terminated. That um, the, so your airspace is completely free for search and rescue mission. And um, I think we also demonstrate that how the use space services are completely integrated in the procedures of um, the traditional air traffic management services. So I think that concludes. I'm just going to check if we covered everything. Yeah, we're going to congratulate the whole team. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I think everything worked, huh? Yeah. yeah.